I'd like to recognize Doug Markham, the Director of, of uh, Communications, to uh, discuss the plan for CWD outreach through the fall. All right. All right, commissioners, thanks for having me here. And Commissioner Cook, I know you've been very interested in this issue, and we're going to do the best we can with what we've got to work with at TWRA. And it, we've got some good tools here. We've got some good people across the state and some real good tools to work with to hopefully help folks not bring CWD back to Tennessee uh, because we know it's going to be a, a really bad thing if, if it gets back here. Um, first of all, the first slide you see in the presentation is, is the slogan that we're going to give to this campaign, which we're calling the media campaign. It's help keep Tennessee CWD free. And we're going to say it a lot, and we're going to put it in press releases a lot and on our Facebook, our social media. But it's uh, Barry Cross put this together for us, and we may rework it a little bit, but we're going to start working with this slogan right here and repeat it over and over and over again. We've got a staff across the state that I'll talk about a little bit as we go through this uh, and explain to you more about what we're going to do. All right, you've seen this map a lot. It feels like if the yellow was water, that we'd need to build a big dam, and that's what we're going to try to do with our media as best we can because it's closing in on us, and it's still a good distance away. Chuck can get more into that if you need him to and, or some of the other staff with wildlife. But 24 states and two Canadian provinces have, this, have at least found uh, CWD somewhere in their state, and we're one of the starting to be islands that, that haven't found it yet. So this, we're going to work to try to tell folks going to these places across the country, what CWD is and why we don't want them to bring it back with them. This is our idea. We're going to educate as many folks as we can about CWD, and we're talking about everybody. We're not talking about just hunters. We want everyone to know what CWD is, as many folks as we can, in many ways as possible. And uh, we want to educate as many hunters about the potential threat to big game animals and to their favorite pursuit. And our idea with that is to... Uh, um, Make sure that they know, the deer hunters know, that, that this, this pursuit uh, creates a lot of dollars for us and for them and for everyone. Uh, the message is how important it is, not, not just to hunters, but to everyone, how important deer is to Tennessee. I think Chuck was talking to us the other day and said it's been estimated something like $46 million in a year or something that number could be lost just, just if we were to get CWD in Tennessee and the fear it would create. To hunter specifically, the media campaign will them will be don't be that guy that brings it back. Don't be that person that goes out of state and brings it back and, and uh, make sure we, we want them to take uh, ownership in this. We want hunters to know how important deer are and how important they are to us in helping us preventing CWD. So that will be part of our message going forward too. We're going to be doing something also that's a little bit different. I'll be working with and our staff will be working with the Wildlife and Forestry Division uh, specifically working with our taxidermists and our processors, also with other sportsmen's groups uh, across Tennessee, direct mail and also direct email with them. Uh, there's some risk assessment that I know our wildlife division is going to be doing, and we'll help them craft the message if they need us to. They're all very smart people, and they're going to be working a lot with them, but it's an important part of the communications project that we work with all of those folks. And we'll be working with them to find out what they're doing with their deer, um, when they get them and we'll be working with them just to educate them on what CWD is and how important uh, the deer project or the deer art of Tennessee and how they can help us stop it from coming in. Uh, our social media is getting stronger. We've got a ways to go, but it's, it's gotten very strong in the last couple of years. We, we, uh, we have a great crew across the state that constantly keeps something out on our, on our Facebook page and we're putting CWD information out there a lot. This particular uh, this was about two months ago. We put this particular feature out there that Amy Spencer wrote. She's actually a, an officer over in Madison County, but she's got a real knack for information, and it did really well. We've put two or three more pieces out there since then, but our Facebook page is becoming an extremely important tool to our agency as far as getting information out there. We crossed over 100,000 folks this year, and it's growing fast, and I think it's got a lot of growth to do. But we use this Facebook all the time to talk to, her, to, to, talk to the folks that, that follow us about everything we can all across the state. We also do a podcast now that we're putting out. We're beginning to do it live. We're trying to 
fill some things out and, and see when the best time is to put it on and how long to make it last. And we'll be working with our podcast a lot. We had Chuck on the other day, if you haven't seen it. He did an excellent job talking about CWD, just the deer season in general. And then he got into the CWD and, and uh, really did an excellent job talking about it. And we'll do more presentations about CWD and a lot of other subjects out there too uh, on our podcast. It's, it's called Tennessee Wildcast. And Jason back there helps a lot with it. We also have uh, out on our homepage of our website, our website's also getting stronger all along. We recently hired a, a web administrator and gosh, really proud of the work she's doing and how well she works with all of us. We're reworking the website some. We're looking at analytics more to see where we need to put out front instead of putting things out there that we want folks that we want folks to see. We're putting things out there that we want that they're coming to, that they're looking for. But we are going to put CWD out there. We've got it out there right now. We'll probably change that that uh, image that you see right now to the slogan in the next week or two. And right now our website is getting about three and a half million visits a year. So it's going to help us some. And, and I think that'll grow also. Uh, but it's out there now. It's been out there for a year or so. If you scroll down a little bit, if we could scroll down on this, you'd see our newsroom. Uh, Lee Wilmot's putting out a lot of releases about CWD. He's sending them across the state. Uh, our information folks in the different regions are picking them up and using them. And we'll also be working with our information folks a lot to help spread the word and, and get them to talk, talk to their local contacts. Uh, Matt Cameron's here today. If you haven't met Matt, he's the Region 4 information person. And uh, Matt is on top of all kinds of stuff. We happened to watch him on TV the other day and he did a great job talking about CWD in Johnson City. So we're, we're going to talk about it everywhere we go and as much as we can. This is uh, something that's coming soon. Um, gonna, I think this is going to be a wonderful thing for our website. We didn't create this because of CWD. Uh, we're creating this because the guys over in Region 4, Brad Miller, our, our elk biologist, and the staff over there, they, they uh, went to a conference somewhere, I think, and they talked to Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania has this awesome site where you can go out and watch elk. And so we're going to put up an elk cam at Hatfield Knob uh, on, the, on the North Cumberland WMA and that should be built I hope this month or in October and hopefully we will be able to start broadcasting at the end of October to November sometime and at some point after that I don't know if the elk will come out but we're going to have this stuff running two or three hours a day uh, and this will help I think with our messaging in time we'll be able to put CWD messages out there because uh, the elk are involved in this too not just our deer and it also will help us create support for for our elk, but we're looking forward to this. We've never tried anything like this at TWRA, as far as I know, but this is gonna be something that's new and I hope nobody steals our camera. I don't think they will, we'll see them if they do. Okay. Uh, this just started, we sent our first newsletter out the other day. Y'all very aware of that, I know Commissioner Cox, you're very aware of this. Um, this is the new newsletter that we have, sent our first one out the other day to lapsed hunters. Don, can you talk about that more? and uh, how we're doing with all that, but it's just the beginning of this great way to reach more folks and to make our contact list grow. Um, it's, we're doing it through um, Gov Delivery. It's also it's known as Granicus now. Granicus is a company that bought Gov Delivery, and you can see they can design what we want to. This is just, I had the, the lady there mock this up for us. Uh, chronic wasting disease may or may not be one of the topics that we have our folks interested in getting our newsletter received. We probably do something more like 400s, and, but we'll send, if something came out on CWD, we'd probably hit the button to go to everyone. But it's another way to reach. In the end, if we can do anything like Georgia, they reach over a million folks with their newsletter. We're not there yet, but we're just getting started, and we think we can be. Okay, we're also going to be working with, uh, with, uh, with Brandt. Um, a lot of you sit in the meetings with Brandt, our new vendor. Not that new anymore. They got one year starting right about now, a little bit. I think they started last Halloween. Uh, but Brandt came in and gave us a great presentation on what they could do um, online with information as part of our media campaign. And this is one thing we're going to do. We're going to put a message out there specifically to big game hunters right now. We might do more later on. Uh, Mike May, of course, is our, our former chief of uh, information technology, uh, believes that we need to stick with, and, and I agree with Mike, that we need to stick with big game hunters and them because we've got four or five messages out there already. As messages drop out, maybe we can create more messages for everyone. But right now, we're going to target 
big game hunters with this message. So they come online, they buy their lesson, they go to buy their license, they have to see this message before they can go and purchase their, their, their license. It's going to come up and it's going to stop them so they can take a look at it and, uh, before they keep going. And in a small way, we still have some of these out here, your grocery receipt uh, invoice or whatever that you got your license on. And still, I think about a third of our license agents have these. This is a small thing, but at the bottom of it, we're just going to have our slogan, uh, Keep Tennessee CWD Free, with our website on it. Just enough to keep it in their heads and maybe make them read it a little bit as our hunters buy licenses, as everybody buy licenses. And then this is the 8.5 by 11 uh, uh, license that we have. This is the one that you run off at your house that I think people are going to like more and more as they get used to it. It's not been as popular with some folks, a few folks, not many, as they, as they learn about it, but the more they learn about it, the quieter they're getting because it's such an advantageous thing to have to be able to run off your license as many times as you want to. But at the very bottom of it, this is a message you'll be seeing soon. So we know we're going to reach at least, this is, of the, all of them, this is my favorite because I think this will reach a lot of folks. As they, as they purchase their paper licenses and run them off and, and take photographs to put them on their phone. Okay? And then we're also doing PSAs. And the voice of TWA's Don King has been for a long time. Chronic wasting disease affects white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk, and moose populations in many states. We are CWD free in Tennessee and are counting on hunters to keep it that way. Remember, if you hunt out of state for big game animals, it's very important that you learn the proper way to bring those harvested animals home. New restrictions are in place for good reason. Learn more at tnwildlife.org. Please help us keep Tennessee CWD free. All right, of course, Don's been doing that for a long, long time, and, and that goes to several hundred of our radio stations across the state. That uh, Don, I don't think it's been released yet, has it? going to be released soon. And then the other things we're going to do, we're going to be creating some TV stuff. Barry Cross Agency has been really lucky to get Barry. Uh, Barry is doing a great job for us, and this is a 30-second piece that he created. Hunters and wildlife enthusiasts know that Tennessee's deer population has never been better. Now we need your help. Chronic wasting disease and affects the central nervous system of deer and elk is always fatal. There are 24 states across the country with chronic wasting disease. So hunters traveling outside of our state to hunt deer and elk need to be aware that there are import restrictions that must be followed. Partner with TWRA to help keep Tennessee CWD free. Okay, so that's the logo that he created um, doing the video Barry did for us. And then we're gonna do a longer format. That'll be made available to everyone and this one will too. This one's a little longer but it's got great information in it. We're gonna make this available to new stations by the great technology called Dropbox now, where you can pull it in there and then contact them and get our guys across the state to contact the local press. This one's about three or four minutes long with some pretty good stuff in it. Here. 24 states are now dealing with chronic waste and disease. And it's such an urgent issue here now because three of our border states now have it. There are several avenues where chronic wasting disease could be introduced into Tennessee. One is just from a, a deer from a positive state making its way into Tennessee. The second is, is through the movement of deer and elk that are privately owned. Uh, these are exotic animals for the most part. And lastly is through hunter killed carcasses being brought in from infected states uh, that could potentially bring the disease agent and affect the animals in our state. Hunters traveling to other states need to be aware that there's import restrictions on how deer, elk, and moose can be brought back into Tennessee. The import restrictions are basically that the animal has to be free of all central nervous system, the entire central nervous system, backbone, uh, spleen, uh, lymph nodes just can't be brought into Tennessee. So in, in a sense, you would need, the, the animal would need to be completely deboned. Uh, the meat would have to be, um, you basically can just be, bring back meat and finished taxidermy products. So if you were to bring antlers back, the skull, skull plates would need to be completely clean. And then uh, you, you could also bring back a cape. Here, if we cut the neck, get the sample out. Ah, don't matter to me. Okay. Yeah. Primarily in each year during the deer seasons, 
opening day of muzzleloader, opening weekend of muzzleloader, a day or two during the season, opening day of gun season, uh, opening weekend, a, a day or two in gun season, we will be at check stations, we will be at processors, uh, meeting hunters, and, and sampling deer for CWD. Now, the way we do that is we have to uh, remove a couple of lymph nodes from the throat of the deer and send those off to the lab. Uh, that's where we get the most of our samples, but we also will get samples from roadkill deer or deer that we find throughout the year that uh, appear sick or, or, or whatever, that if we can get a sample from it, we'll get a sample. We're being proactive simply because of the impact CWD could have on this state, on, on the hunters in this state. We have well over 300,000 hunters, deer hunters in this state, and that impacts their recreation. It impacts the economy of this state because those deer hunters spend money every time they, they have a, a hunting trip. You've got an economic impact that's estimated by the University of Tennessee of being about 46 million. Chronic wasting disease would lead the Wildlife Agency or its commission to take drastic action in changing the deer regulations from, from what they are currently, which are very popular and embraced by hunters. Uh, they would have to change those uh, in such a way that typically are not popular uh, with hunters. It's gonna have a great big negative impact on the economy. It's gonna have a huge impact on the wildlife agency and how it manages deer and how it interacts with hunters. And then lastly, uh, it's gonna impact how hunters, um, how they care for their animal when they harvest it. This, this is a, our proactive effort. This is surveillance. We wanna know if we have it. And so uh, in the last few years, we've looked at just under 10,000 deer and elk in Tennessee uh, and tested for CWD. No positives, all negative. Again, this year, we're looking for uh, as many deer as we can get, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 deer this year, uh, statewide. Uh, we, if, if we have it, we want to find it so that, so that we can address the issues. We have a CWD plan in place, and, and we'll just go straight to implementing that plan. If you're a deer hunter this year, pay attention to our Facebook page because we're going to be posting where we're going to be on opening day of gun season, opening day of muzzleloader season. So if you harvest a deer, and if you would, come by and let us sample your deer and, and include your deer in our surveillance effort. For information on import restrictions for deer, elk, and moose, see tnwildlife.org. All right, I appreciate Barry for doing that, and we're almost at the end here. One of the ways we're going to track this and, and uh, see how we're doing is a, a new clipping, electronic clipping service that we've got. And uh, y'all will be a part of that at, at some point as we transition out of the old one that you get, news power line, and get into this. And uh, it's going to give us a great idea on what's being broadcast across the state, what's being uh, placed in newspapers across the state, even radio shows. I, if, it, if, it's, if it's aired on YouTube, I found out the other day you can actually listen to it uh, on YouTube, Larry Ray show we listened to the other day. I don't know if Commissioner Sanders is out there or not, but you can see so much from this new company called Meltwater. They're not new; they're new to us, and uh, they are terrific with the information that you that you can find out there. We had a a uh, recently, not too long ago, we had a cute little deer thing on our Facebook. They had just two deer fighting that over in West Tennessee that we threw out there. Uh, that also came from Amy over in West Tennessee, and we tracked it one week, and it went to 170 million people. So it went all over the country. I don't know why that one deer thing or two deer fighting was crazy, but it shows you the power of social media, especially as you grow it and especially as you keep it busy, and our staff keeps it busy every day. Uh, a few other little things to talk about. Um, talking to Director Carter when, we were, when this plan was being put together and outline and he said we definitely needed to consider the legislature in any message and two so Chris uh, Richardson came over to the office and we discussed that Chris will be handling the legislature uh, he'll if he needs some help with messaging we'll be glad to give it to him but Chris knows the legislature as well as anybody that we know and so he's going to be making the legislature aware of what's going on uh, with any of the me messaging that we have to do also hope to work with the Wildlife Federation uh, missed him but um, but Mike came by recently to say hello and talk about CWD, and they're way on top of it. So I hope we work a lot with the Tennessee Wildlife Federation uh, to, to get the message out with their help, too. Uh, we have a staff, as I said, across the state. 
Uh, we'll be working with them, so we'll be able to reach a lot of the local radio and TV station. I hope we're on the radio stations that are outdoors soon. We're trying to set something up with Larry Ray, and I hope Commissioner Sanders, we can get on your show. No pressure, but I hope we can get on there. And, uh, and we'll be working with other stations. And, and uh, the video you saw, by the way, um, I don't expect anyone to run that thing full like it is, but if you throw it out there and you give them pieces and parts and you do the work for them, the hope is, is they'll pick it up, especially after we call them and, and ask them to do so. But we'll provide, uh, we'll provide spokesmen for them. Uh, Chuck Yost is our spokesman really on CWD. We can help him out and uh, we are gonna get a veterinarian, I think relatively soon. And that person, he or she will probably become a big spokesman on CWD. We'll continue working on stuff. We are working on a video right now that I haven't seen out there. I, I don't know if anybody else has made it, but we, uh, we spent some time with a taxidermist the other day uh, shooting video with him to show folks what a clean skull looks like and clean teeth look like and what a pelt's supposed to look like. So we're going to put that video out there too and make it available to whoever wants to see it. Anyway, that's it. If you've got questions, I'd be glad to take them. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Doug. That was a great presentation, thank extensive you. plan, and especially like the the speed bump idea and the uh, the on all the license the, the the print off when you buy your license. The you know being that this is a uh, probably the biggest threat we have to the agency and the biggest challenge. It, I just it is what you're doing but just emphasize that I hope that every bit of communication we have with people there's a tag uh, something to do with C CWD and the, the thing that I felt was missing and at least what little clips you showed us uh, the Chuck showed or the little the video I had Chuck in it he mentioned that well it's a neurologic disease and it's always fatal that's true but I don't think that's enough I think we need to people need to know more about the disease because I, I when I've talked to people about it they go oh yeah that virus thing that's going around I go no it's not a virus you know and people I think a lot of people go I don't even know what it is yeah let's keep it free I don't want to have CWD don't know exactly what it is so I, I think we need to emphasize how virulent the disease is how it's once it's in the environment you can't get rid of it it does nothing but continue to grow we can't get rid of it so you know I feel like that might be missing. Of course, I haven't seen everything you've shown, but just what I saw here, it, it seems, it feels to me, or I hope we can emphasize how bad the disease is. We'll do that, Commissioner. We have been. I mean, we've been doing some of that, but we can do more, and we'll do more. We're trying to get that message to where we don't scare people. We want them to know they're lucky that Tennessee is a CWD-free state, and we have a great state, but then get that message out there, too, uh, that how dangerous it can be. And I will tell you that one of the, one of the issues I wrote down and jotted down was EHD versus CWD. We're in the time of year right now where it's hard to tell folks the difference between the two. It's confusing. I think that will go away when that frost comes and kills that bug, but we will keep making that difference and keep working on what CWD is. And in my opinion, we shouldn't try to sugarcoat it. I mean, I think we need to be very clear what it is, and it is a really bad problem, and I hope we're not sugarcoating it. Yes, sir. So, we won't sugarcoat it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Commissioner. Commissioner. What, uh, how is the PSA environment now at radio and commercial TV? How, uh, is that still a viable way? I mean, I know we're talking about, Don, you're doing some PSA stuff. Is it still a, 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 an effective tool, or is, has it been sort of, I don't know, diluted because of the uh, time it, uh, or the, the cost of time on TV and radio? I think it's an okay tool. I think that we're putting stuff out there hoping that they run. And I think they will a lot, a lot on radio. Do you I have any, do, I'm sorry, do you have any control over, so what you do is you submit the, the, the whatever it is, the information, and then they choose when and how much they do? That's they correct. Do? Yes, sir. That's okay. correct. Now, what we did, the longer piece, and Don can address that because since he's been doing PSAs forever, mm -hmm. that longer piece, we don't look at that as a PSA. We look at that as we're going to contact them and try to get yeah. them used to finished product, but the PSAs, Don? Yeah, as far as the uh, radio PSAs go, we still get a great benefit from yeah. that in a free way. Yeah. Uh, a lot of this, the smaller community radio stations play those. Uh, we put those out uh, about every quarter on CD, and we've, we've 
uh, researched, and we've, we have about 80 stations that we send monthly to, so, so they'll receive those electronically now. Right. Uh, so, so we still get a lot of good airplay uh, in a freeway. Is it mostly AM, uh, small stations, or is it FM? It's a good mix. Just about, okay. Yeah, it really is. What about, uh, what about commercial TV? Is there, is there really uh, opportunity there like it used to be, or is it just jammed now? There again with, uh, like Doug said, it seems to be you have a lot better chance if, if something is more newsworthy. Right. You know, if it's information that the, the viewers can use or something that that uh, they can tend to make dramatic. Right. And in this issue, they can certainly make it dramatic. And so I think we do have a really good opportunity yeah. uh, with the TV stations. Awesome. If I may two comments and I'll be done. I think Jeff is right. I think it needs to go the other way. I think this thing needs to look like it's a dire situation, which it is. And sugarcoating is, is we shouldn't do that. Um, I think we need to be uh, able to be a little bit more emotional, which is something that you and I can talk about. But if you remember a long time ago with the trash issue, you saw the Indian with a tear, right? And it was an emotional situation that tugged on everybody that saw it. And I think there's a, maybe a discussion, if with y'all's permission, uh, that we should have about uh, um, having uh, some work that's a little more emotional. I don't know if it's a kid looking at a dead deer with a tear. I'm not sure. But, but I think what happens is, and I, I go back to this PSA thing, what I've experienced is the content really dis determines how much you use the PSA. And if it is effective and if it's something that, that, that works for that station, then you're going to have an easier chance. Not that we don't have good stuff. I'm not pleased. Right. I'm not being critical. I just think that there's some input that if it's okay, we could have that might make it a little more effective. And then lastly, I'll shut up, is who did the logo? Uh, uh, Barry. The one there that you're looking at now, yeah. Barry Cross. Okay, is there a way to make those those black letters red? There he is. Okay. Yes, sir. We, that, uh, this this was a this will go to our graphics person next. Barry made this as he was putting together the video. Okay. We're we're not through with this yet, but I see where you're going with that. Yes, sir. I, we okay. can do that. Yeah, we um, I've done a I spent a lot of money on research on this kind of stuff, and the more as you know, it's more graphic and more in your face, the better. Okay. Now, keep Doug, talking. I'm you. listening. Well, I, I mean, I, I just think it, it it needs to step out a little bit, and uh, uh, you know, we can talk about it. I'm I'm not an expert, but I sure have lost a lot of money on what <laughs> what not to do. But <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about I, that. Yes, sir. But, but thank, thank you for you. listening to me and Don. Sure. Great work, Commissioner Cox. Follow up on what on what uh, Commissioner Stry was talking about. Um, Maybe they don't know what CWD is. Maybe if you'll put chronic wasting disease on there instead of trying to brand it. With well, a, with well a, we, the CWD free is just part of the slogan, but everything we do, we'll talk about chronic wasting disease before we get to CWD. And also, um, if you had a video of a sick deer that, that follows up what James was talking about, that to show actually what a sick deer looks like and how pitiful it looks, we will. You, you get you get sympathy for the animal, but then you can talk about what 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 it's going to cost in in real money for the state, for tourism, for the agency, for all those things. In some kind, not just the elevator speech, but the, when somebody clicks on it to really read about it, you put what what could happen to the to the to the budgets. We will do that. And there's a pass out uh, that came down to. He's got some of that information you're talking about in it. That's that's um, pretty daunting, and we'll be using some of that too. That Director Carter handed that to me at the, a few minutes ago from a meeting he's recently gone to. That the you know there's some hope in there, but there's also a lot of a lot of stuff that really is concerning. Commissioner King. Well, I, I'll, Chuck, you might want to answer that somewhere. It's There are folks that are doing it, and I don't think it's terribly expensive. But it's not something it's, the agency does. Right? No, no, ma'am. Okay. Well, if you're going to recommend, whoa. <laughs> if you're going to recommend that, people need to know how they get them tested, I would think. Right. That, that's, 
not something we're using yet, but we will. But if we're going to start talking about testing, I, I'm not sure we're going that route just yet that we're going to tell them to test. But there are folks that, that know there's ways you can test. And we on our the Facebook piece we did the other day with Chuck, one of the questions was, how can we test them and how much does it cost? I don't know the answer to that yet. Who are Chuck? I can add a little bit to that, but before I do, I want to apologize. That presentation was a little too much Chuck, so. Um, oh, you were the star. That was good. <laughs> I was thinking we need to recommend a better looking spokesperson, but um, the Southeast, um, Southeast Cooperative Wildlife Disease <clears throat> Group is currently focused on putting together information for hunters in non-positive states on their sampling options. Talking about costs, talking about what labs are available, how to get the samples to the lab. So we're involved with that through a technical working group who's focused on that as we speak. So there'll be some content in that regard very soon. Commissioner Swan. Don't go far. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing that I saw was when they were sampling it to get the lymph nodes, they were cutting right into the throat, obviously to get the lymph nodes. Would it not be better for the hunter to see that skin back and them getting the lymph nodes? Because it, it may uh, make a hunter who wants to have his deer mounted uh, stay away from having it sampled. We could do that. Uh, there's gonna be plenty of them sampled this year. Uh, and I'm sure we can do that. Now, will they show that on Channel 2 in Nashville? I, I can't promise you that they will. Um, well, of course, digging in is pretty dr uh, drastic. Number two, uh, I think it would be uh, very beneficial if we had some kind of information to show the hunter how to uh, how he should um, prepare his um, trophy to bring it back into Tennessee to have it mounted, uh, to show how to cape it out and cutting the skull plate cleaning the uh, brain matter out and so we, forth. The taxidermist, the version that we did the other day is a short version of just trying to get something out there to show him, but he has offered his time to go for full deer all the way through the process. So um, that's something that we're gonna do. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. You know, I was wondering if there was a way to get on to the, uh, the big hunting shows that you see that are nationwide. Uh, with this information is that an outlet that's available to us well there we could make a contact with them i don't have contacts for a national show outside of bill dance <laughs> bill dance might would do something with us but it, it's a possibility i expect it's being talked about on the big shows um we have some contacts with with some folks that we could probably get some way but i don't have an immediate contact outside of bill dance okay commissioner sanders uh First thing, if uh, you'll give me the PSA from Don, I'm pretty sure I can cut through the red tape and air it this Saturday. Uh, I know the owner, I think I can do that. <laughs> Secondly, uh, not discounting your efforts on social media. My concern is there's a lot of hunters out there that don't use social media. I agree. And, and so I, d I don't wanna see us ignore the non-social media users because, and, and, I, don't, and I don't know how to do that doug so uh but i, I you know I, I think of my hunting club which i've been a part of for nearly 30 years there's probably less than five percent in that club that use social media but they're all hunters and so it, it's something i don't i don't want to see us lose sight of we part of what we'll do too and and uh and it's another thing i talked to director carter about is we can reach out through clubs we can find qdma or local clubs and talk to them it's kind of like the bear issue we had um the no dogs in east tennessee we've found the local president and talked with him to try to get him to help us without i think we can I think we can contact a lot of them and, and help them out. But I, I'm hoping that they watch the local news too. That's ideas like that and the PSAs on radio. I hope we reach those folks. And I hope the ones we do reach on social media talk. I think that that's exposed. I think there's a lot of folks that talk who go on social media, but I do think you're right. I think we gotta go outside. We're not just gonna rely on that. Commissioner Sanders, where do you think those that don't get their news, where would, how would you reach those people? You know, I don't know. Um, there, a lot of them. I mean, and I've had calls about this hunting guide that we got, 
and I know that we have stuff in there, but I mean, I have people that read this thing like the Bible. And I mean, that's obviously a good way. And, and the other thing, and I, I didn't bring it up earlier, um, you know, I haven't bought a license since 2005 when I bought my lifetime license. So I'm not catching all of that um, work that we're doing on the license and stuff like that. So we've got to reach out to those people as well. Um, and and I, again, Doug, I'm not critical because I think we're doing, a, I think we're making great strides. But I'm about as social media conscious as, as a lot of people uh, out there. And there's a lot of stuff I haven't seen. And, and that, that concerns me with the email accounts and everything I do for my show mm -hmm. and then the social media that I do for my show that I'm not catching this stuff and neither is my co-host because he never brings it up in, in, on show prep. So I, th I think we've got, we still got a ways to go and, and maybe it's a function of money. I'm not sure what it is, but I mean, there's, there's a ways, we, we got to take this seriously. Uh, like Chairman Cook said, this, is, this, is, this scares the heck out of me as much as anything. It should, and we know we have a ways to go. And I think what I showed you today is a lot of what we're going to do. I didn't think of everything. Like, we'll, we'll put it in our magazine. Uh, if you bottle, you get that, and there will be stuff in our magazine. We will put advertising uh, in, in the hunting guide and would like to put it in the fishing guide. Uh, so we will use the kind of things like that to help the sportsmen who might not go to social media. We'll try everything we can try to get the message out there. And I think we've got to reach out to the retailers, too. I mean, this is going to affect their livelihood. And when you start hitting their bottom dollar, they sure pay attention. There's poster ideas going around to, put, to go and meet with them. And we'll work with our wildlife officers. I have no doubt that they have some contacts locally, and we'll be working with them a lot, too, to reach who they can in their communities. And, and the one thing I say, Bill, is um, I do think they still read the newspaper a lot. As much as we like to think everybody's gone away from the newspaper, people do read the newspaper and because we can run a, a small ad in the newspaper and get more contact and all the other stuff that we've done, and it just still blows our mind. So, Commissioner Gardner. Yeah, I think uh, one of the best ways to reach every hunter is through kids. Um, it's worked on seat belts, it's worked on smoking, and I didn't see anything about the hunter education and expanding this discussion in the hunter education part. I think a terrific idea. I think I didn't think about it. Kids force parents to do all kinds of stuff, right? And and uh, and that is one way that we can we can address this and 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 reach possibly some of those people who aren't Facebook savvy or Snapchatters or whatever it is, um, you know. But but we need to we need to definitely include this in in some sort of hunter education and bring to the forefront to these kids and they'll educate their parents on their own. Uh, and if we're lucky and keep it out, there will be adults when we still won't have it. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I think, I mean, I just saw a hunter safety class the other day. I would have showed Chuck's video in that class. And, I mean, again, it, it's reaching some, but, I, you know, I had 37 students plus their parents that were there. So, I mean, we could have easily reached 60-plus people with that one five-minute video, four-minute video, whatever it was. Any other questions from the commission? Well, Doug, thank you very much. Right. Obviously, you and Don, your staff, have put a lot of time and effort into this and really look forward to seeing where, where this goes. But thank you for all your work. You're and welcome, and Commissioner Cook. Yes. Thank you. And one last question for Colonel Ryder. Are, are, is there any increased reinforcement along the borders or, or uh, uh, you know, will you be – and also, what's the fine for – should someone bring in a carcass from a CWD positive state? Yeah, we'll continue those. E we'll continue those efforts like we did this past year. Each region we were able to accommodate or grab deer. I think there was three or four out of one. There's like 14, and where's Russ? 14 deer out of region two that we intercepted. Uh, another half dozen in region three, and another half dozen in four coming from like Iowa, Illinois, Oklahoma, and Wyoming for some of the states that brought them in. And then we were able to get those deer in. It, it's a $25 fine. Plus, you know, we talked about the court cost earlier today. So that that's the law enforcement efforts. They'll continue as, and it's a little bit early right now because of the Western states are just now getting into their peak of their hunting season. So we anticipate some of those 
carcasses getting back, but we'll continue that strong effort to intercept those carcasses. Commissioner Stroud. Do you, sorry, do you confiscate the meat? I mean, do they lose? We, we hold the carcass until the judgment. Then at that point, if, if, the, if the ruling is to destroy the deer, yeah, we'll incinerate them. And, and you're testing it, obviously, when you get it? Most of those carcasses are beyond mode of testing. Oh, okay. Were you able to get any? They're too far gone, aren't they, Russ? We tested, we tested one. Okay, out of that 14, we got one test? Yeah. The reason we didn't test the other one is we didn't want to spread, it yeah. spread any of those All right. secretions and such, so we just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Well, I know this is something that we can't do as an agency, but it seems like the, the, the $25 fine is nothing, and the, the restitution, it's not possible to, right, to, to provide state. restitution <laughs> for what could happen when somebody brings the disease in. So uh, I guess that's something we need to work on, that there's a true penalty, a significant penalty, maybe lose your truck, lose it all for, for, you know, for bringing in a carcass. So that's something I guess we can talk about. But, well, thank you very much. Any other questions for Colonel Ryder? I just I have one. At some point, uh, there was a discussion, or, or I raised a question about what happens when someone brings a deer or some animal with CWD to the uh, processor, and the processor turns them away, right? Well, that, that was part of that letter campaign that we uh, – partner up with wildlife the one that He's, doug just showed yeah and we we gave that notification to to the processor and tax numbers please contact us but yeah if he he turns them away man, there, there's no telling what where that carcass is and, and, and that's my that, and that was the concern that my processor raised someone brings a deer he turns it away well they take it and bury it in their yard or wherever they do it throw it in the landfill now we've introduced cwd in so i don't know if there's some ways or some rules or whatever that we can maybe control that a little bit or if if we're going to educate them um you know if there's any enforcement or anything that we can do we can certainly increase that effort to go by these processors and and taxidermists on the law enforcement side to do some random checks and, and monitoring a little increase efforts there mr holbert I, I think this all comes back to what you and commissioner stroud talked about right now people are not scared of the disease of bringing in i think we need to do a better job of educating folks and if it takes scaring them i, th I think that's what it's going to take because people have to see the damage that it's going to do and i think as long as we tiptoe around that we're not going to succeed so i just want to reaffirm that that i agree with you two guys that that we've got to get the veggies across how scary this truly is thank you very much well, madam chairman if it's okay with you could we take a 10 minute break Commissioner Swan. <clears throat> One last question. Uh, none of this addresses the use of bottled urine. And um, a lot of states now are banning the use of that. What is our, uh, what's the agency's uh, Commissioner position? Swan, we're gonna have a discussion about that later today. Okay. So, thank you. So, quick 10 minute break. 223? 223.